Hey folks, this is JR with DIY Prepper. Welcome to the channel. One of the things that we would miss the most during a power outage or especially a longer term blackout would be lighting. While modern lights are great, they're super bright, they do have some disadvantages. If the situation lasts long enough, maybe those lights or the batteries that we have for them wear out. And also, if something like an EMP were to happen, those kind of lights would be taken out pretty quickly. So today, we're going to be talking about oil lamps and hurricane lanterns. One thing that a lot of people wonder about oil lamps is, why would you want to use one over something like a candle? After all, candles, they're very cheap, they're easy to find, and as long as we still have bees, you would still be able to make those using renewable natural materials, even during a long-term disaster. But one of the biggest reasons why I prefer something like an oil lamp or a hurricane lantern is just because they're safer. If you look at a lot of candles, they tend to be kind of long and skinny, which makes them easy to knock over, whereas something like this oil lamp, it has kind of a wider base. Most of the weight is at the bottom, so that makes it a little more difficult to tip over and less likely to start a fire. And in the case of hurricane lanterns, you can also hang them up, which can keep them out of the way of people as they're walking by. Another thing that makes lights like these safer than candles is that their flames are enclosed. For tabletop lamps like these, it has a chimney that protects the flame, whereas with something like this hurricane lantern, the flame is completely enclosed. So you still want to be careful that nothing comes into contact with like the sides of the lantern or anywhere near the flame, but every little bit of safety helps. And the most dangerous place on lamps or lanterns, especially these tabletop lamps, is the area right above them. That's where most of the heat goes, and if you put something too close to it, including your ceiling, then it could start a fire. But when used safely, that heat can be helpful, like during a cold weather power outage. It won't generate nearly the amount of heat that something like a fireplace or wood stove will, but it may help take the edge off, especially if you're in something like a smaller room, you just need to make sure that it's ventilated. Oil lamps and lanterns, just like anything else with an open flame, can produce carbon monoxide. So be sure to have some carbon monoxide and smoke alarms with plenty of spare batteries, along with some fire extinguishers nearby. Another thing that I like about oil lamps and hurricane lanterns versus candles is that they're much brighter. Your average candle produces around 12 to 15 lumens, whereas something like this DEET 76 can produce 88 lumens. While I said that they're brighter than a candle, they are going to be a lot less bright than some other lighting options. So if you take just an incandescent light bulb, it's going to be way brighter than these, even though, I mean, this is considered an inferior technology to modern LED lighting, which is incredibly bright. So when using these, you just want to understand that this is an older kind of technology from a completely different era. So if you pick these up expecting them to be as bright as modern lights, you're going to be very disappointed. Now, one oil-based lighting method that does come close to modern electrical lighting is an Aladdin lamp like this. Kind of like with Coleman gas and propane lanterns, it uses a mantle which allows it to get very, very bright. But the only problem with those is that they can get extremely expensive. And there's a couple of different things that'll determine how bright either one of these lanterns or lamps is. And one of them is the fuel type that you're using. The most common kinds of fuels for these are going to be kerosene and paraffin lamp oil. Kerosene does burn brighter, but it also has a stronger odor than paraffin lamp oil, and that can be a problem if you're using this indoors. A lot of people, they have used clean heat, which is a kerosene alternative in their lights. From what I have read, it seems to produce less of an odor than regular kerosene. It's not something I've tested, but it is something that a lot of people do. Paraffin, on the other hand, is more refined than kerosene, and it has a longer shelf life. Where kerosene is considered to have a shelf life of around five years, paraffin lamp oil can last indefinitely. Now, it's not going to be as bright, and it doesn't perform as well in cold temperatures. If you let this get cold enough, it's going to congeal and just turn into a big, solid, unusable blob. So I think between these two fuels, kerosene is a good option if you're going to be using something outdoors because you can use that extra brightness if you're trying to illuminate a larger area and the odor is not really going to matter that much because there's going to be a ton of ventilation. But paraffin I think is a good choice for indoor lamps and lanterns because if, especially if you're trying to light up a smaller room, it's not going to matter if it's not quite as bright. 
but also having less fumes would be helpful. Another thing to consider is that kerosene is going to be a lot easier to find locally than lamp oil will be. At least that's been my experience. I've been able to find kerosene and clean heat at hardware stores, been able to find this at the abomination known as Walmart, but with this stuff, like my local Walmart gets in a few bottles during the summer and when things get cold, it sells out and you don't see any more until the following summer. Now, while the internet's up and running, that's not a problem. You can order as much of this stuff as you want to, but if you like shopping locally, that is something to keep in mind. Although you might be able to find this stuff at places like hobby stores or places that sell home decor that sell things like these lamps and lanterns. You also hear a lot of people talk about using olive oil in these kinds of lights, but it's probably not going to be as easy as people make it out to be. Olive oil is a lot thicker or viscous than things like kerosene or paraffin lamp oil, meaning it's not going to draw up into the wick as easily. So what my experience has been is you'll light something like this It'll burn for a second, it'll burn up the olive oil that's at the top of the wick, but after that first bit of oil burns up, you're just going to start burning your wick because oil isn't drawing up to the top fast enough. Now, there are some possible solutions to this. I haven't really been able to test all of them, but some people say use something like carbon felt as a wick because these kind of wicks, they're very dense, very thick fabric which also is another thing that makes it harder for that olive oil to soak up into the top of the wick. Another thing I've heard is that people use something like a thin copper wire sewn into the wick that'll help conduct heat down into the oil, which will kind of thin it out a little bit and make it easier to soak up into the wick. Then there's also some more primitive methods that people have used, things like different animal fats. However, there are some fuels that you definitely want to avoid using, things like gasoline, white gas, like what you would use in Coleman lanterns. Then especially aviation fuel because that has chemicals in it meant to prevent icing, which can be fatal if inhaled. But the burn time that you get will depend on a couple of different things. And the first one is how much fuel will your lantern actually hold? Larger lanterns like this air pilot are going to hold more fuel than something small like this Comet will. So if you take the Comet, for example, it can burn for around 15 hours on 6 ounces of fuel, while the air pilot can burn for 27 hours on 31 ounces of fuel. Now the reason why this isn't proportional is that the Comet also has a smaller wick than the air pilot does, which means that this bigger lantern is going to be burning more fuel than the smaller one is. And the size of the wick is another thing that'll determine how bright a lantern or a lamp is. So that little comet that I showed a second ago uses a 3 8 inch wick, which is pretty small, whereas the air pilot and these larger tabletop lamps, they have a 7 8 inch wick, which is kind of getting a little bit to the larger side, so they'll be a little bit brighter. And how you trim your wick will also affect its brightness. So if you trim a wick straight across like this one, it's going to kind of have kind of a little lumpy shape to it. If you trim your wick to a curved shape, it'll have a curved flame. But if you trim it to a point, it'll have a taller, more pointy flame, which is also the brightest. Another thing that'll affect the performance of a lamp or lantern is the height of your wick. If you set your wick too high, then it's going to produce a very bright flame, but it's going to also produce a ton of soot. So that's going to stink up your house, and it's also going to darken either the chimney or the globe on your light. Now, the chimney on a tabletop oil lamp is pretty easy to clean because you can just take it right off. But for hurricane lanterns, you'll need to pull up on the top of the lantern and then tilt the globe over, which will allow you to remove it. And then you just do the reverse to reinstall it. Another thing you want to be aware of concerning wicks is that you don't want to use the same wick with different fuel types. For example, if I had paraffin lamp oil in this lamp, and then I decided to use kerosene with it instead, I would need to remove that old wick and put a new one in. And the same thing goes if you purchased a used lamp or lantern. You don't know what was burned in there, so you want to go ahead and just get a new wick for it. And whenever you do install a new wick, you want to give it plenty of time to soak up fuel before you use it, and 20 minutes is usually enough. Wicks can be a little bit difficult to find locally, at least where I live. If you want to buy them in bulk, the best way to do that is to pick up rolls like this online. 
Like this is a 7 8 inch wick and I think the roll was around 6 feet long and you can get this for somewhere between 7 and $10 depending on the size that you need. Now when it comes to tabletop oil lamps versus hurricane lanterns, there are some pretty significant differences between the two. First of all, these little tabletop oil lamps, they aren't really meant to be carried around. They're meant to sit in one place. The, where the chimney fits on, it's not all that sturdy, so if you're carrying it around, the chimney could easily fall off. It could break, which will result in hot glass everywhere. And if it hits your arm on the way down, it could potentially burn you. However, hurricane lanterns can be carried around if need be. They have a handle at the top of them that you can use to keep your hand away from anything hot, and that also works well if you need to hang it up. Just be sure that the sides and the top are far enough away from anything that you don't want to get burned. Hurricane lanterns are also completely windproof since the flame is fully enclosed, so that makes them a better option if you're needing to use them outdoors in windy conditions, or even if you're just walking around, you're not going to have to worry about that flame going out because a little bit of wind caught it. So if you're wanting to pick some of these up and you don't have any yet, a good general rule to follow is the older the better in a lot of cases. So if you compare this old Made in USA Dietz Comet with this more modern production Dietz 76, there's going to be some big differences. First of all, the globe is going to be a much higher quality glass. It's actually going to have things like the brand name and the model of the lantern as part of the glass itself, whereas the newer ones, it's thinner glass. It also just kind of has the brand name painted on on this air pilot here. You can actually see that part of that paint is already starting to come off, and I've had this thing less than a year. Also, the metal on the older ones, I believe, is a little bit thicker than the newer stuff. Dietz was originally an American company, everything made in the USA, which is the case with this. Then they sold out and I think production of them was shipped overseas. Now they're still made on the original equipment, I believe, but the materials that they use are a little bit less quality and that's the same thing goes for most things produced nowadays. If you want a very high quality modern production model, you're gonna need to pick up one by fewer hand. These are for sale on layman's.com and also I think some other places as well. But the materials that they use from what I understand are much better, much better build quality. But one thing that DEET still has going for it is first of all, the lanterns work fine as far as function goes. Both of these are, you know, they do their job. But also you have a lot more options as far as the sizes and the shapes and the appearance of these lamps, which appearance isn't as important, but these really do double as decorations for a lot of people. So, I mean, that is a consideration. And after all, like I said, they do still work. And when picking these up to use, there are some things that you definitely want to look out for, like any obvious signs of physical damage, like the globe being broken. Although you can replace those in most cases, but one very important one is these arms on the side. They're not just there for appearance. They actually help with the airflow and the function of the lantern. So if it's separated either at the top or the bottom or it's become pinched to the point where airflow will be constricted, you don't want something like that. Also, you want to make sure that the mechanism inside of the burner that controls the height of the wick, you want to make sure that's operational and also that the fount which holds the fuel isn't leaking or anything like that. And while lamps and lanterns like these are great, I think that they're just one part of an overall lighting plan. So if you want to see some more off-grid lighting methods that you can use, be sure to check out these videos. Thank y'all for stopping by. Y'all have a good one.